A new twist to the plot. Oliver McCall is now crying. Let's listen in. The year is 1992. American Riddick Bull is the reigning WBC heavyweight champion. The number one contender is an old rival from the 1988 Olympics, British Canadian Lennox Lewis. Lewis, representing Canada, had walked away with gold after a controversial stoppage. This rivalry seemed to continue in negotiations for the WBC Heavyweight Championship, with Bo and Lennox unable to come to an agreement over the fight's payoff. This led to Bo holding a press conference in which he relinquished the title and dumped the belt in the trash. The World Boxing Council then named Lewis as their champion. Now, retrieving the belt from the trash is probably the least prestigious way a boxer has ever been crowned champion, but Lewis successfully defended the title three times. He defeated Tony Tucker, with Tucker being knocked down for the first time in his career, and he beat Frank Bruno by TKO and Phil Jackson by knockout. Hey, what are those people doing up there in the crowd? They're having a little dance party. A funny little dance, and I missed the knockout. But you probably don't need me to tell you about the boxing pedigree of Lennox Lewis, and besides, this video isn't really about Lennox Lewis, it's about the fourth man who faced him for his belt, Oliver McCall. Compared to Lewis, McCall was a nobody, sporting a 24-5 record to Lewis's 25-0. McCall had recently joined promoter Don King, whose reputation in boxing is about as squeaky clean as a gas station restroom. Under King, McCall had gone on a five-match winning streak to secure his spot as number one contender. He faced Lewis for the belt in Wembley Arena, London in 1994. Lewis makes his entrance to massive support from the British crowd. He looks calm and collected, like he doesn't really give two hoots about this no-name bum who'll make another easy notch on his undefeated record. In contrast, the American McCall is loudly booed, and appears nervous as he paces and shifts his weight from side to side. This is actually an improvement from his entrance, during which he appeared to be crying? This is the biggest fight of his career and it's clearly causing some emotional turmoil for him, like he's not fully confident he can face it. He won't even leave the corner for the referee to start the match. Gil McCall looked McCall. almost as if his head was ready to explode. Well, McCall's I, I, gone to his corner now, has apparently forgotten about McCall, referee's instructions here. or doesn't want to participate McCall. in them. Come on here, McCall. Come on here. Still doesn't want to participate in referee's instructions. What a, what a, very, very strange. Well, I've he's seen a lot of fights. Here, I haven't McCall. seen this before. Well, he's never had a big occasion like that, and he understandably is a little bit involved with everything else. When the fight does begin, the two have a fairly even exchange. Lewis adopts a wide stance using his superior reach to keep McCall at distance with jabs while he looks for an opening. A tentative style compared to McCall, who goes in with a flurry of punches anytime he sees the opportunity. It's a close first round and neither man gets in a lot of offense. When the second round begins, it seems like Lewis is starting to dial up the aggression and put in more offense. Fight plan. But perhaps that's also the fight plan of of uh, Stewart. And you know, uh, Larry, uh, down goes down Lewis. Down goes Lewis, Lewis having hand. caught a short left hand inside. Six, Six seven, eight, nine. What is this? The WBC's referee has stopped this fight after a count to nine with Lewis standing in front of him. And we're going to have a riot here. Jose Guadalupe Garcia stopped the fight in the second round. Oliver McCall is going absolutely nuts. The crowd at ringside momentarily stunned. And that's got to be one of the strangest stoppages I ever saw. Bet you didn't see that coming. The commentators complain about the stoppage, and they're obviously better qualified to talk about it than I am, but I really don't agree. Lewis clearly had his bell rung. He was still falling all over the place as the referee approached 10. He looked to be leaning against the referee as he counted the 10. I think that's a fair call. But Lennox Lewis, who had just lost his undefeated record and his heavyweight championship to a nobody, disagreed. 
Lewis felt he had been robbed, saying McCall was lucky and offering him $10 million for a rematch. Oliver McCall felt Lewis's comments were disrespectful and declined the offer, sending both men down long, difficult paths till they would meet again. I called Oliver McCall a nobody, but that's really not fair. This guy was legit. Known for his powerful punches and incredible durability, he was a promising talent before going pro. He had an amateur record of 31 and two with 28 knockouts. He was the 1984 and 1985 Chicago heavyweight Golden Gloves champion. Shortly after turning pro, he paid the bills by working as a sparring partner for a rising star, Mike. Tyson. As with Lennox Lewis, I'm not going to waste your time telling you who Mike Tyson is. Sparring generally involves a mutually understood agreement from both participants that neither one is going to try to kill the other. It's not about winning or losing, it's about getting comfortable punching and being punched and ultimately getting better. This is not how Mike Tyson sparred. Mike Tyson was trying to kill his sparring partners and he went through them like a pet shop goes through mice, with many of them quitting after the first day. Not Oliver McCall though, he sparred with Tyson countless times over the years. Being Mike Tyson's punching bag doesn't sound like much fun, but McCall seemed to enjoy it. Where most others were left folded after a punch from Tyson, McCall could take a beating and still hang with him. That's because he was tougher than a $2 steak. In his entire career, McCall was never once knocked down, and many think he had the most durable chin of all time. Paired with his powerful punches, this made him a force to be reckoned with. With his triumph over the illustrious Lennox Lewis and the WBC heavyweight belt around his waist, he should have been set to become one of the greatest boxers of his time. But life is rarely so straightforward. Coming from a rough background, McCall was plagued by personal issues. His strange behavior before the Lewis fight was only the tip of the iceberg. In his first defense of his new title, he defeated Larry Holmes in a close unanimous decision. In his second defense, he lost to Frank Bruno. Yep, that didn't last long. Bruno's time with the belt was even shorter as Mike Tyson had just gotten out of prison and he wanted that title. Like a lamb to the slaughter, Bruno faced Tyson and lost. By this point, Lennox Lewis was back in the picture, having been forced to make a comeback with multiple successive fights after McCall had denied him his rematch. After all that work he put in just to get back to being the number one contender, he would have to face Mike Tyson to get his belt back. This was going to be a lot harder than it was the first time. Well, actually, no, it wasn't, because Tyson vacated the WBC title to focus on the WBA Heavyweight Championship. So again, Lewis was the number one contender to a fella who said, this isn't worth a shite to me. Here, you can have it. Instead of just giving Lewis the title like last time, the WBC put it up for grabs in a fight. Lewis versus McCall 2. Payback or playback. While Lewis had been fighting his way back up to the top, McCall had been falling apart. His personal demons started to overwhelm him and his behavior became erratic. In the years since losing the title to Frank Bruno, McCall had been arrested numerous times, twice on drug possession charges and most recently for vandalism, disorderly conduct and resisting arrest after throwing a Christmas tree in a hotel lobby during the course of some altercation. With his mental health in a disastrous state, he was sent to rehab in hopes he could kick his addictions and get his head straight. His manager Don King assured everyone that McCall would be good to go for the 1997 rematch. While some might consider putting someone in rehab in a heavyweight championship boxing match as a funny thing to do, many expressed concern over McCall's recent antics and questioned if he was ready for the fight during such a low point in his life. But come the fight, McCall looked a lot more determined than he did for the first fight, opting to sprint to the ring instead of cry. Lewis once again appeared to have a cool head. McCall once again seemed to be worked up, but this time with energy rather than nerves. He looked like he was falling apart when he handed Lewis his first ever loss. Now he looked like he was ready to hand him his second. This is gonna be good. But Lewis controlled the early fights, and McCall didn't offer much offense except some awkward wrestling. He threw some punches, but it didn't seem like there was much commitment behind them, like his heart wasn't really in it. Even his defense seemed more playful than serious, and he took some big shots from Lewis, but they simply bounced off McCall's granite chin. By the third round, McCall had almost stopped throwing punches completely, seemingly focusing on defending Lewis's punches, or just outright taking them, as if he was playing with them. So he went back with a right, 
This is already strange, but watch McCall when the third round ends. Why are both men walking to their corners in the same direction? Because McCall isn't going to his corner. His corner men call him, but McCall isn't interested. Now watch him when the fight is resumed. Oliver McCall has stopped throwing punches altogether. It's like he has no interest in the fight. He doesn't care that the crowd boos him as he aimlessly walks around. He doesn't care that Lewis is still baiting the head off him. The ref calls a timeout and asks McCall if he wants to continue. Apparently he does, but nothing changes when the fight resumes. At this point, Lewis should probably just go for the kill. He'll either take him out or the referee will decide he's unable to defend himself. But Lewis seems confused, like all he's looking for is a fair contest. The round ends and once again, McCall refuses to go to his corner. The crowd is outraged. McCall has a total breakdown and needs to be convinced to continue. When McCall goes back in, he still won't fight. Lewis still can't put him down and look at some of these punches he takes. The exterior is hard as a rock, but inside he's fallen apart. The ref calls it. Lennox Lewis wins by technical knockout. As he leaves the ring holding back tears, the crowd boo and jeer him. Excuse me, all of McCall is being is being scored, and they're the punch breaking out there when the crowd looks like they should punch, as you can see. The strangeness continues after the fight. When asked to explain what was going on, McCall claimed he was employing a rope-a-dope strategy and playing mind games with Lewis. It looked more like he was playing mind games with himself and losing. It's like that clip of Tyson Fury giving himself an uppercut. A psychiatrist examined him and bizarrely said he was fine. The Nevada Athletic Commission temporarily suspended McCall and withheld his $3 million purse. A few months later, McCall's wife took out an emergency custody order against him. He was detained in a psychiatric ward after a mental health expert determined he was mentally ill and needed hospitalization. Makes you wonder what the fuck that first psychiatrist was doing. Once again, more qualified to speak on the subject than I, but I feel like just watching the fight was enough to tell you this fella needs help. Nine months later, McCall was deemed healthy enough to continue fighting. The Nevada Athletic Commission lifted his suspension and gave him his $3 million purse, albeit with a $250,000 fine. He continued boxing, but his career was continually disturbed by legal troubles and addiction problems. This went on for over a decade. It's crazy when you think about it. This guy maybe had the potential to be one of the greatest. He could go toe to toe with Mike Tyson and withstand him but was overwhelmed by, well, himself. Looking at all the shots he took from Lennox Lewis really makes you wonder how that fight would have gone down if he actually tried. He had all the tools to beat Lewis, he'd done it before, but he just wouldn't. Like imagine you were regularly sparring with Mike Tyson and you could knock out Lennox Lewis. You'd feel unstoppable. Lennox Lewis has had a legendary career. He only lost two of his 44 professional fights and Oliver McCall was one of those losses. Nobody watching this could have lasted nearly as long in the ring with Lewis, but I bet a good number of you still would have faced certain defeat with more conviction than McCall faced potential victory. It really makes you wonder how powerful this guy's inner demons were to defeat him. Here's this certified badass, this absolute beast with everything to win, and he just couldn't get it together. You've got to look after yourself, your mental health trumps everything. Your body might be an ass kicking machine, but if the brain operating that body isn't taking names, then it's like a blind man driving a Ferrari. If mental illness can incapacitate a heavyweight fighter of this caliber, imagine what it could do to you, you new armed weakling you couldn't beat snow off a rope you loser are you feeling sorry for yourself 
Well, you should be because you are dirt. You make me sick, you big baby. Baby want a bottle? A big dirt bottle? So yes, your mental health is very important and you have to take care of it. As bad as it clearly got for Oliver McCall, he did eventually overcome his demons and get on the straight and narrow. It was a long, hard fight, but in the end, he won. And seems to be doing a lot better now training boxers, including his son. What an inspiration. If you were inspired during the events of this video, or you lacked the mental capacity for that and just enjoyed watching, then I have many others for you to enjoy, like this one about a boxer who cheated and was convicted of criminal possession of a weapon, that being his hands. You can subscribe to see more in the future. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Thanks, and until next time, stay safe. <laughs> That's also the fight plan of of uh, Stewart. And you know, uh, Larry, uh, down goes down Lewis. Down goes Lewis, having caught a short left hand inside. Six, seven.